Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to Pharma IQ. My name is Rhiannon Charnaday, your conference director and host for our digital supply chain online event. Now, just a few quick reminders. Feel free to share this event on LinkedIn. See the resource center, share it to your team. They still have a chance to register for today. And if you did miss any of our sessions yesterday, don't worry, all of those sessions are available for you to rewatch on demand for up to a month, and you'll receive that information post-event. Now, before we get underway with Novartis, just a quick reminder of what you can see there on your screen, as it's super toggle-friendly. So you'll have Marco and Dan's bios profiles linked in URLs on the right-hand side. Feel free to connect on LinkedIn and carry that conversation on. You'll also see the Q&A widget. So any questions that you do have for either of our presenters, feel free to drop them into that box, hit submit, and we'll get round to asking those questions at the end. Now you'll see a resource center as well. Dan and Marco have kindly provided their slide deck, so feel free to download that in that resource box. Now, before we get underway, I would like to introduce you not only to Daniel Fritz, Supply Chain Domain Architect at Novartis, and Marco Cuomo, Manager, Applied Technology Innovation at Novartis, but to kick us off, Layla Hawkins, our editor at Pharma IQ, is going to set the scene. Over to you, Layla. Thank you very much, Ree. Um, well, hello, everyone. I am delighted to be here today and to be talking about such an exciting and I would even call it somewhat enigmatic topic. Um, whenever I speak to people about blockchain technology, I like to ask them how widely they believe it is currently adopted and how much longer they think there is to go until it is implemented by almost all of us. Um, I always find it very interesting when some people say that they think it's a really nice idea in theory, but it's just that, it's an idea. Um, whereas others are convinced that this is going to be transformative for our industries and for our lives generally. Um, I think the reason it's so divisive is because it's something that is not tangible. You can't pick it up and play around with it or move it around. It's something that sits in the back end that most of us don't see um, or indeed have access to. Um, but as with all great things, and as I learned from a recent conversation I had with our <clears throat> two experts today, um, the most transformative things require great change. And that change must be in the way that we think and the way that we do things. So if you consider cryptocurrency, um, suddenly we've got a new form of buying and spending that doesn't require the input of the banks that have been established for hundreds of years. And blockchain is going to do something very similar. It's going to completely rewrite the rules that we're accustomed to. Um, so for some people, that's scary. For others, uh, blockchain and thinking specifically about how it can be used in pharma and in our supply chains, it just makes sense because it provides that much needed transparency that businesses need. Um, and this is something that Marco and Daniel are about to talk to us in far greater detail than I ever possibly could. Um, so I'm handing it over to our experts now. Thank you. Thanks, Lila. Thanks, Ree, very much for the kind introduction. Um, to start with, um, we are, I, I, I don't think we're really experts. A real expert is somebody that has had something up and running for several years on this, and we're still in our journey. But uh, our journey has uh, brought us some insights, uh, and we've been on it for a few years, so, so we're happy to share that with you. Again, my name's Dan Fritz. Um, I'm a supply chain architect at, at Novartis. I'm also the industry project leader um, of Pharma Ledger, which we're going to present to you today. Um, my background has always been in systems, supply chain system, manufacturing systems, um, with over about now 30 years of experience in that area. And, um, and a few years ago, I got pulled into the, uh, the emerging technology digital um, department where, where I was introduced to, to blockchain. And I said, this has some potential. This has an amazing uh, possibilities. It could solve a lot of the problems that we have, and um, it's worth pursuing. So I, I joined forces with my, my partner here. And, and uh, over to you, Marco. Yes, my name is Marco Cuomo. I'm also working for Novartis the last couple of years, or nearly 17 years. And I'm, I'm an IT guy. I'm the whole time doing IT stuff. And 
the last five years I was focusing on blockchain, but um, how can we use blockchain um, in an enterprise environment? So the focus is not so much on cryptocurrencies or these kind of things. It's more how can we use this technology in an enterprise environment and what has to be done. So um, yeah, I joined forces with, with Dan um, to, to find that out. So back to you, Dan. Thanks, Marco. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we are not going to start with the technology. We're going to start with the problem. Why? Um, this is, these are problems here, which are, are problems that are, are big ones. Um, we're talking about uh, uh, inability to trusted share, trusted information with each other. We're, we're talking about the issues around security, the problems we have with counterfeit medicines, uh, fragmented data silos and everything. This is all leading to um, inefficiencies and waste. And these problems amplify themselves and create bigger and bigger problems. They can't be solved alone. That, that's the, the basic um, premise of, around blockchain, uh, that, we, that it is a team sport and that we need to work together um, to solve these problems. But if we do work together, um, we can address them and um, we can develop something which we, we call or, or is called a digital trust ecosystem. And, um, and there's some components of this which we're going to get into um, in more detail during the presentation. But um, in, in, in general, we're, we're aiming to um, use open source solutions, create an innovation platform, enable trusted data sharing, have patient centricity at the core of everything we're doing, and, and ultimately benefit uh, patient safety and health. Um, and since we're all patients, that's a, that's a good goal to have. So I will uh, now hand it over to Marco for maybe a little bit more on blockchain. Yes, um, we don't go too deep into the blockchain and normally Dan is presenting that slides and he always brings the same joke that will be asked afterwards the five A's here. I don't do that. Um, so therefore, let's go quickly into what blockchain is promising. Um, and we have here the five A's. One thing is blockchain is all around assets means um, blockchain or maybe you have also heard blockchain is something bringing the internet of value and this is because blockchain is able to manage assets in a way on the blockchain that solves a lot of problems like the what the so-called double spend problem so how can you make an asset in a way just unique so that you not can just replicate so that's the the asset part audit um blockchain is meant uh for 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 doing audit trails or or, or these kind of things so because Everything what you put on the blockchain is immutable. So it's basically, you can only add new information like a ledger. Uh, you cannot update or modify existing information. So that makes it the perfect tool for a lot of use cases around that. Um, automation, um, there is a lot of things you can do with blockchain and what we call smart contracts means you can put uh, business logic on the blockchain, which then means this business logic will be executed. You can't stop it. And it's transparent, so you know exactly what will be done. So the execution of something is guaranteed with the blockchain. Um, uh, blockchain as such is not helping with the anonymization, but we can build in a way that it also protects your privacy. So that's the other A, which we also cover with blockchain uh, when, when, you, when you follow certain elements there. And last but not least, the most important part of the blockchain is it's all for one and one for all. That means it's something you cannot do alone. You need to do it uh, with, a, with a bigger environment, with a consortium. So it's, it's basically what we tend to say, it's a team sport. It's nothing you can do alone in your four walls. And that gives a perfect segue to the next slide. Uh, not perfect, but nearly. Um, when we started in Novartis as thinking about uh, blockchain and how can we use blockchain in an enterprise environment, we very quickly learned uh, we, we can't do it alone. We need other like-minded organizations, not only pharma company, but also hospital patients or 
just people in the healthcare industry. So how can you now build something which you can't do alone? So you need somewhere an organization, a consortium, and where we were looking around and we found um, from our point of view, the perfect consortium, which is called IMI, Innovative Medicine Initiative. This is a consortium between the European Union and the FPIA. FPIA is a, another uh, organization which is um, gathering the, the, let's say, the big pharma companies in it together. So this both organization, European Union and the FPIA, joint forces uh, funded the whole IMI with 10 billion and started this in 2008. Under this umbrella, they started a lot of projects, which is typically something you can't do alone. And also you want to make sure it's in the benefit of the patients, that's why, why the European Union is part of it. And one of these projects is Pharma Ledger. Um, at the beginning, we called it blockchain-enabled healthcare. It's one of the projects which started um, later not in 2008, basically it started in uh, 2020. Um, when you can go to the next slide, please, Dan. Um, so what is Pharma Ledger or Pharma Ledger in a nutshell? Um, I said it started in January 2020, so it's a three-year project, uh, start date in Jan 2020, ending this year, December 2022. But in fact, we already started earlier, means in 2018, to prepare all the work before to align with the other uh, partners. So at the end, we had a consortium of 29 partners, 12 pharma companies and 17 public partners. Among these are very um, big names like uh, Pfizer, j and and of course, Novartis, as Dan and I are working for Novartis, but also public partners, the University of Madrid, um, the SERS Research Institute, in, in Greek and, and a lot of other uh, big names uh, or also small names, but not, not uh, nevertheless very important contributors. The budget for this three year project is around 22 million. And the primary goal, the underlying goal is that we build the blockchain infrastructure for the healthcare industry. Um, that was the, the, the that is the, the underlying idea. But an NT infrastructure or, or just an infrastructure with, with not, no one using it, it's not a lot of fun. So we said, OK, let's have a couple of use cases. So we came up with eight use cases along the value chain of pharma companies, which is, or in this case, we simplified it in um, health data, clinical trial, and supply chain. These are the three pockets around it. But not only that is the goal of this pharma lecture in uh, um, consortium, it's also to educate people um, and, and to make sure that the idea of blockchain is spread in the healthcare industry. Okay, and it's a European, European uh, funded project of at least one half from the uh, European Union. So you can um, also see that uh, basically across Europe from west to east, from north to south, we have um, a lot of, uh, uh, or we have spread um, these different public partners there and pharma companies. Of course, the pharma companies are mainly global players, but still um, it, it's nicely spread across Europe. That, that is um, basically indicating that diagram. So we are a very diverse team from a geography, but also diverse from the companies. So we have big pharma, but we have also small agile startup companies, we have universities, um, we have hospitals, so we have really a very diverse and widespread, um, uh, yeah, let's say consortium, which should guarantee that we really, um, that we don't miss anything in the, for the healthcare industry. So now over to you, Dan, with the value chain. Thanks, Marco. So this is a, an overview of our, our use cases. As Marco said, these are kind of uh, along the, the value chain that we have for, for in the pharmaceutical industry, um, but also in healthcare. Um, and uh, we're going, of course, this is a supply chain conference. We're going to focus in on the supply chain use cases in a little bit more detail, but just 
so that you're aware that we have um, other use cases in the area of clinical trials and, and health data. For example, um, clinical trial recruitment, matching um, patients to clinical trials uh, using an anonymized um, health profile, uh, clinical trial e-consent, so the informed consent form, all of the paperwork that you have to do when you're undergoing a procedure or, or even getting a vaccination, all the paperwork. Then we have uh, two versions of traceability, clinical traceability, commercial or finished goods traceability, which we'll, which we'll dive into a little bit more. And the most advanced use cases, um, electronic product information or EPI, which is also known as e-leaflet. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. And at the end, um, it's, uh, it's around IoT, Internet of Things, health data, and, um, and using or combining the power of the data to better um, um, treat and, and provide different therapies. So uh, let's go into basically the, the supply chain aspects of this. And there's just a few things that you can um, take away from the, from the approach. We, we, we said, and, and, and we have to look at this from an end-to-end -end perspective. So really we have to go from the very uh, upstream uh, start of a supply chain um, through um, the um, intermediate, through, through manufacturing, packaging, distribution, to, to, to the hands of the patient and even then beyond. So that, that really is the, the, the approach end-to-end. -end. And it, it's a, this is a pattern that is common in blockchain because the value that you have is only gained when we look at the approach end-to-end. -end. Everyone is currently optimizing their piece of the pie or their part of the op, um, um, uh, supply chain but it should be optimized for the customer that at the end. And that only happens if we look at it from the, in the complete manner. So that's your supply chain. What is the blockchain part? Well, we say it's just a thin backbone that extends across all of those um, activities. Um, and it provides a single source of truth so that um, people um, can trust what they're looking at. And it's, um, uh, it's enabling then different functionalities or new capabilities uh, to be realized. And here's some of the examples of the capabilities that we're looking at. We're going to talk about um, counterfeiting today. We'll talk about traceability, the electronic product information, which is, um, yeah, as I mentioned, the all leaflet. A, a important thing to, to understand is um, on the left here, this is all starting basically with trusted identity. We need to have a trusted identity for um, organizations, for products, for, for devices. Um, this is a, the, a huge um, um, benefit, actually, for many use cases. It's the use case itself, the identity of a product. Is it an authentic product? Can I trust that? Um, or is it, you know, is it a counterfeit or something? So um, this is a, the view that we've used um, within the project concerning um, a supply chain, and we'll go into a little bit more detail now on the use cases. This use case is the um, electronic product information. Um, and as you can see uh, rather quickly, um, it's all about um, taking that, um, that product information, which is usually coming in kind of a, a folded um, paper insert in the box and, and creating it and providing the latest approved version digitally um, to the patient. And, and we foresee some value in that because the, the information can be updated a lot more um, quickly and, 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 and other um, uh, benefits. Maybe we can switch between languages. Maybe this enables also um, sh uh, shortages to be avoided in the supply chain because we, can, we have some flexibility in how we distribute the, the, the medicine. Um, it, um, it has um, a lot of different benefits and a lot of different possibilities in the future, and it is the, the one pr use case which we want to launch initially, um, actually in the fourth quarter of this year with a, with a limited pilot, um, which is um, not so easy because, you know, launching a product um, which has an impact on patient safety means you need to have it compliant from a data privacy perspective and from a quality perspective. So computer system validation and, and things like this. This is a, a huge effort, but I, um, I'm optimistic that we can do it. Building on the EPI use case is um, the anti-counterfeiting use case. This is actually I'm near and dear to my heart because I'm also leading this use case in the project. This has two components. One is MFPA or multi-factor product authentication, 
you know, if you're signing into your account or something, sometimes you get asked some secret questions or you have to confirm a code on, on your phone. Um, so with multi-factor pack packaging authentication, we're looking at seven different checks of that product based only on a scan of the barcode on the product. And that should increase the um, certainty in the um, authenticity of the project. The, the, the other great thing about this is that um, if we want to um, authenticate uh, potentially a feature that's on the pack, um, you could do that. You can do that you, for different technologies or different features um, using the same app. And so we, we, were, we had three different feature providers actually in, in, in the project or have them um, who are working together to make this um, capability work. And, and, that, and that's really exciting to see that kind of collaboration. The second part of it is, um, is, is Marco's favorite band, ACDC. Um, okay, well, maybe not favorite band, but, um, but this is anti counterfeiting data collaboration where with patient's consent, we can get some data and get some other insights into the problem of counterfeits. Today, I don't think anybody really knows how many counterfeits in the, in the world there are. There's estimates ranging anywhere from a few billion to 200 billion. But we know in some markets, it could be maybe 10% or 30% of the market is counterfeit medicines. This needs data and analytics and trends um, combined in order to actually fight it in the future. So this is um, actually a big, a big topic. The other two um, use cases, just really quickly, finish goods traceability. Very similar aspect, sing, single source of truth, enabling um, different players uh, in the downstream supply chain from the manufacturer, distributor, wholesaler, hospital, um, pharmacy, to, to have a common um, uh, uh, view of the truth or of the stock. We can do inventory management. We could do uh, recall notifications. This, this is actually um, a very important one um, as well. And um, we also have clinical supply chain, uh, a little bit of different flavor, as I mentioned. It's um, for investigative medicines, so lower volumes, um, and um, and so and and uh, but but from a from a conceptual uh, approach, very similar to to the finished goods traceability. So those are an overview of the the use cases. So I, I'll hand it back to Marco for a little bit more on this this DTE thing. What's it? What is that DTE, Marco? Yeah, this is a kind of a vision. Um, as I said at the beginning, we said um, blockchain enabled healthcare. That sounds very technical. So uh, during the project, we, we realized more and more what we in fact are building is a digital trust ecosystem. As I said, or as we said at the beginning, blockchain is something, you it's a team sport. You can't do it alone. You, you need other participants. So you have to build an ecosystem. And digital uh, trust means in this case, it is underpinned with the blockchain technology to create that trust. And of course, there will be not one digital trust ecosystem, there will be many, and also in different other industries like finance or government, etc. And hopefully all of these uh, digital trust ecosystems int will interact in one or the other way. So this is what we understand under the digital trust ecosystem. So this is the, the bigger picture we see for Pharma Lecture as, as a starting point to build or to be the first building this um, healthcare DTE, there will be others, of course, and that's not a problem. The, we are not the only one and, and the one we know everything, but we have something which we think makes sense and we start with that. And other organizations, other industries will also do it. And um, um, so our idea is to have a di digital trust ecosystem um, in, in comparison to, for example, there are already existing one, for example, Amazon has also an ecosystem, but that is very dominated by one vendor. This is not the case with healthcare, DT, or, or more in more uh, precision with, with pharma lecture. So that's the idea here behind it. And when you go to the next slide, we also show, um, this is a very high level architecture picture how we think the software or the infrastructure, the IT infrastructure can look like. It's, it's a high level picture, but important elements are, or we think important elements are to build that um, digital 
trust ecosystem, not only for healthcare, it could be this, this, light, this uh, infrastructure can be used for any ecosystem, big, small, whatever. Important is when we go through the color coded layers. So when you start at the bottom, we have what we call the hierarchical blockchains. This is this means basically what we have here for each use case or group of use case or ideas. You can use your own blockchain technology. So we are and in pharma lecture. We think we we're not saying what blockchain technology you have to use. You can use any. Here, as an example, we mentioned uh, Ethereum and Hyperledger Fabric, but in fact, it can be any blockchain uh, technology where you have a kind of a smart contract. The idea is that somehow they are um, anchored in a root blockchain, but that's not even necessary. It's just a, a nice idea and will give um, further um, possibilities. Now, the important part is what Pharma Lecture is, is one of the things Pharma Lecture is leveraging and, and using heavily is what we call Open DSU. That's uh, uh, what we call Open Data Sharing Unit. Think about it, about that. It is um, a two things. One, it's a framework for developers to simplify the life of developers and to abstract the underlying blockchain technology. That makes it for a typical business developer from, from a pharma company easier to develop um, a business solution because the development team has not to focus on the technology from blockchain that can focus on the solution. So uh, OpenDSU is here a nice framework. At the same time, OpenDSU is also the middleware um, to establish a kind of thin layer. Okay, in this picture, the la thin layer is a little bit big, but in reality, it's a thin layer between the blockchain technology itself and the blue layer on top of it, which are the applications, um, electronic product information you heard before, finished good traceability, and much more, we hope, in the future. And this middleware layer is guaranteeing this abstraction to the blockchain technology, the yellow layer. I think that's enough technology for today. Let's go to the next slide here. We have, um, um, yeah, this is again, uh, we are very proud on that. So we have implemented basically a real distribute decentralized blockchain. And you see here there are about um, um, six pharma companies who run and pharma lecture itself who run a blockchain node independently in their own controlled data center. So that is a really truly decentralized blockchain network from from uh, from a technology point of view and and this is just a starting point for for um, electronic product information uh, one of the use cases and now we are building on that and we add more and more node to that blockchain this blockchain network is a hybrid network that means only pharma company can write or create transactions on the blockchain but everyone in the world, every patient, every person in the world can read from the blockchain. So it's a hybrid blockchain network. And I'm very happy that we could start to establish um, a blockchain network in the healthcare industry following all the regulatory um, requirements. Over to you, Dan. Thanks, Marco. So Pharma Ledger is a project and like all projects, it uh, has an end, and uh, the end is in December this year. Um, so we still have a lot to do uh, this year around documenting um, everything, continuing um, awareness and education, uh, and also then transitioning. But but the one of the big tasks we have before us this year is implementing a governance and operating model. The idea here is that this project, which has been funded with, uh, you know, with public money, um, is is going to have an impact, and it is going to be sustainable, and it will be able to scale, and it will be able to bring value. So what we're focused on now uh, closely is looking at, okay, what is going to be, what are we going to put in place to ensure that what we've delivered during the project can be used and, and leveraged um, beyond uh, the end of the of 2022. 
This is a, a, a very high level model of um, what we see is a, a future a pharma ledger association. Um, this association would be looking over the technology aspects of it. Um, oversight, it's not, as, as Marco said, it's not running the network, but it's um, um, you know, overseeing it a little. It's ensuring the quality and uh, privacy compliance. As mentioned before, these are, these are solutions that have an impact on patient safety, so they need to work uh, 100%. Um, the association is, is funded through its members um, initially, so uh, membership management is a key thing. And, it, and new ideas, new use cases uh, need to be uh, developed, incubated, tested, piloted, and then and then ultimately launched into the network. So that's that's um, another um, uh, key function of the of the uh, of the association. There's a, a kind of a strategic roadmap we have for for how this is going to work. Um, as you can see. Uh, on the bottom, that's uh, that's the the platform itself, and it's being it'll be continuously improved with new services like like the identity service we talked about before, which is so important. Um, the products, the as mentioned, the the first um, uh, product is electronic product information, which we hope to to have ready in the fourth quarter this year. That will be followed um, with other use cases as we uh, as time proceeds, but we're um, um, we're, we don't have a hundred percent schedule now when those are going to be launched. We have to make sure that EPI is a success first and also learn from it um, in order to improve the way we do it in the future. And, and this is not just the farmer ledger. This is, a, this is also open for third parties for complementary innovations. I mentioned the, the security feature providers that we integ that, that integrated their technologies on the any counterfeiting use case. That was three. But you know you could you could integrate ten. So we we want to encourage and 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 uh, attract third parties to leverage the farmer ledger uh, components in the future for their benefit. Um, and 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 the more that join, the more value that will that it will create. Okay. Uh, so before we just wrap up the presentation and hand back over. Um, just want to invite you to, to follow us. You can, we've got a website, farmerledger.eu. There's a monthly newsletter. Um, there's a lot of content on the website also with webinars and, and you can follow us on LinkedIn or social media as well. So we'd be happy to, to have you follow us and, um, and stay abreast of, of, of the developments and give us the feedback and engage ultimately um, on this journey. So thanks very much for your attention and uh, we'll hand it back and start the Q&A. Dan, Marco, thank you very much for an insightful and detailed presentation. So audience, over to you. Thank you. I can see questions dropping in already. Feel free to add any more and we're going to open up the floor to have more of a discussion Q&A. So let's kick off here. Let's talk about why blockchain? Let's start there. Marco, you want to take that one? Yeah, I can start with the with the blockchain. So, <laughs> um, so from, from first of all, um, yeah, I'm a technical guy and I like new stuff. And the blockchain um, took our attention because it, it comes with something which is it's, it's very fascinating. It's something like decentralization. It's the opposite. We are normally used to it. Everything is hierarchical. Everything is controlled by by one organization, by one person. And and uh, we we run in a lot of issues more and more and. As we expand and we we go over the the boundaries of of a company, we we enter the ecosystems. You realize decentralization is something which which can help solving problems to to bring it back to to a normal size. I mean, I'm from Switzerland and and we are very federated, uh, co a small country and even a small country is federated, which has some advantages but also some disadvantages. Sometimes it takes more time. Than other things, I think Dan, you like to say, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want um, to go far, you 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 need a team to do that. And the blockchain is, is something which also fits in the idea more and more today in a in a world where we can say with decentralization we can build more resilient system, more robust system. Uh, we we get a better understanding, a better control. 
uh, over it because it's decentralized. It's not controlled by one mighty organization. And, and so that was that was one of our drivers. Uh, think about it. Who's in control of your data? Who's in control of your identity, self-sovereign identity, self-sovereign data? These are these are concepts and ideas which get more and more important. Another big word is digital sovereignty. Uh, and it's, it's not only blockchain. That's much, much more you need. But blockchain is one of these technology uh, which can help here. And with Bitcoin, we saw something really fascinating, a currency where you don't have a centralized organization controlling it. This has it can have a huge impact on the whole, uh, whole society. This was the fascina fascinating stuff. And the more we looked in it, we were thinking, what can we do with that in an enterprise environment? And, and so we had some ideas, as you can see here, um, but there will be more coming and, and we will see more and more useful usage to it. Maybe Dan, you can add a couple of things to that. No, I think that's a that's a great answer. I mean, the only thing I, I'd like to add is I, I really like the idea. Um, it's not so much about the technology uh, for me, but it's more about kind of what I term like hyper collaboration. It is it's actually a, a paradigm shift. It is a mindset shift, which says you know to really fix these things, we need to work together and 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 reach out and collaborate and and achieve consensus and compromise once in a while. But um, but uh, this is going to enable us. It's about that, and when we can when we can prove that that's true, then then I think this is going to open up a whole new um, yeah error. It's um you know fundamentally part about uh, you know Web three decentralizationing and being in control of your own data and identity. And actually, just referring back to Marco's phrase there, if you want to go far, go together. It's actually something that is so important in this team sport. So I want to just refer to Courtney's question here about how would potential collaborative partners engage with Pharma Ledger in some of the areas mentioned, so anti-counterfeiting, finished goods traceability that are less developed so far. Uh, yeah, I can I can take a stab at this. So um, on the on the in the Farmer Ledger Association, we we um, um, are developing. We have want to have a lab, an innovation lab, which is open and inclusive, where um, the, the 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 projects or the use cases that um, are not you know ready for launch or so mature and everything are, are developed and um, tested, and 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 this is where you know people can bring new ideas. They can bring their own, their new capabilities, uh, and 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 work together uh, in the in this thing. So so we um, are planning, you know, later this year, in the second half of this year, to really start to um, disseminate the the setup and how how exactly to engage um, going forward. The 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 actual the association should really be live in in at the start of 2023. So um, the best way to do is, you know, kind of stay engaged, stay stay linked through the newsletter or or follow on LinkedIn to find out as as we progress, and then you know and and provide specific you know steps there for how to how to actually engage. Thank you, Dan. I've got a question here from Greg, and I'm hoping we can answer this one. Will the supply chain health or excursions be recorded against the product? Uh, I can, I think I, I think I understand the question. I mean, the, the idea is that um, um, if we're talking about excursions, um, and maybe we're talking about temperature monitoring, um, mm -hmm. but um, the idea is that, uh, you know, you can, in principle, have a, a, a digital twin representing a product, whether that is a shipment, a shipment level, a, a batch level, or a pack level. Um, I, we have the technology today where I should be as a patient, be able to check a medicine pack and, and, and see who had it, where it was made, see if the manufacturer has good sustainability practices from an ESG perspective, 
um, prove that it's the temperature was kept at the right thing and, 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 and see other information, you know, not just the electronic information, but I would like to know everything about that medicine because I'm putting it in my body. You know, we have that technology today and when patients know that this is possible, they will, they will demand it, I think. And so everything, you know, this concept of a digital, digital twin or, or like a digital twin could have all of the information, the, the, the manufacturing information, the release information, um, all, all this could be associated with the project and, and, and made, made available. Excellent. Thank you for that summary there, Dan. I just would like to come back to you both, actually, before we begin to close out today's session. And that's really to touch on what that key message or takeaway would be that you would like the audience to go away with. So, Marco, if it's OK, if I could come to you first, what would be that message you would like the audience to take away? Um, as I'm an IT guy, I have the tendency to say the technology is the most important part, but in, in the blockchain, it's, it's obvious. Um, you need the technology, that's for sure, but the most important thing is you have to create your ecosystem. So um, when you start with a blockchain project and you are alone in your company and thinking about how can I use blockchain in my company, I think that's the wrong start. So the, the takeaway for today is blockchain is something where you have to think big in the sense of you need an ecosystem. The ecosystem can be small. You don't need thousands of partners in it. You can start with a small ecosystem with a few partners, but you should, you should start from the beginning with the mindset, um, how can we build an ecosystem? Who are the participants? Who are the other partners there? And, and, and then thinking what could be a solution which is really helping us um, to go forward. The technology is there. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying everything is fixed or, or solved. The technology is there, the, and, and it will solve the problems you will have. But think in, 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 the, in, the, th uh, in the way that there's an ecosystem, and um, how can we, how can we uh, leverage, or how, what, what kind of problems can we solve in that ecosystem, uh, and, and then you, you will go in the direction of blockchain. So th that, that's, for me, the important part. The technology will, will, will follow. The technology is there. It will evolve. There's a lot Thank of things you, to go okay. with. I agree. And I just actually, before Dan, I come to you for a closing remark, I'd like just to welcome back in Layla Hawkins, our editor at Pharma IQ. Layla, is there a closing question that you have for our key opinion leaders today? I do have one question, yes, and it, it kind of touches on the partnership working and collaboration a little bit and kind of harking back to um, cryptocurrency, as we've seen, as soon as that idea took off, lots of people started developing their own uh, currency and technologies and exchanges. Is there a possibility or a danger, I guess, that this same thing could happen with blockchain, that people realise it's a wonderful idea, but then everyone starts bringing out their own um, blockchain technology, then, then it's not an integrated system anymore and it's not as democratized anymore. Is that something that could happen? Certainly, you, maybe you could argue it's already happened, you know, because we, we haven't seen, you know, really one platform um, or solution kind of emerge um, a, as a winner. So uh, we, we know, you know, it's just like with the systems we have today, if you've got uh, uh, fragmentation, and, and different systems, then you have to build interfaces um, or, or design, you know, for, for interoperability and everything. This is, this is of course, uh, feasible. It's a must because uh, different systems will run in parallel and everything, but that is going to extract, that's going to detract from the value of, of the solution. We, we've, uh, we, what we're trying to do is to design uh, the solution such that it really is a uh, uh, as easy to adopt as possible. You know, the asso the association is a not for is going to be a not for profit. It, it's 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 it, you know going to be developing new solutions, and the and the a barrier for adoption. You know, sh it shouldn't be you know very expensive and everything to join. Uh, and so um, yes, it's a it's a it's a it's a threat. And but if if there is an alternative which makes sense, which creates value. Which grows in value the more the the, lar the larger the network gets, 
which can scale with new inf implementations and new solutions, then um, uh, and which which is decentralized, which is not creating another you know tech giant or something like this, then we think that has a possibility to to grow, and 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 bring benefit for everyone. Great in summary, Dan. So Dan, closing us out today on top of what you have just mentioned, what's yeah. that key takeaway that you would like the audience to go away with? I, I, I think, uh, like, like Marco said, you know, uh, this is all for one, one for all. Uh, it's a team sport. But, but uh, so I don't need to say that again. I did say it again. But uh, the, the, the most important thing, I think, on top of that is really to get started. Um, this is, it, it's, it's, you know, you say we're experts or something like this, but every day we're waking up and going, aha, oh, didn't think of that. You know, so it is really, it really is a journey. It is uh, this mindset, you know, paradigm shift, and it doesn't happen overnight. You cannot go into the boardroom and say, look, this is great, let's do it. And, you know, it, it, takes, we, it takes time, and, and, and it takes experience, and it takes experimentation, and, and it takes conversations and talking and, and that's so this been this this experience we've had with Pharma Ledger now pretty much five years of having these conversations with the industry is, is is great, but it but it's it's about getting started. It's about having those conversations and getting engaged. If you think it's going to come sooner or later and bring what it is, it's time to, to get started. Nice. Great note to end on. I think we are. It's still a learning curve day by day, but I appreciate that this presentation has given great food for thought to the audience and it is time to get started. So feel free to download that slide deck audience in the resource center uh, and stay tuned with me if you click that join now button as we come to a close. It's there in orange. We're going straight away over to be joined by Transvoyant, looking at digital transformation of the plant to patient supply chain. I'll meet you there going live in roughly 13 minutes time. But first and foremost, just want to thank Marco and Dan from Novartis for being with us here today and Leila, our editor at Pharma IQ for opening. So thank you everybody. And I look forward to seeing you for the second session of the day. Thanks very much. Thank you.